Can you imagine having an extra $200,000 or maybe even $500,000 in your retirement account that you could get over the course of your life? Well, guess what, my friends? In some situations, how you elect to take Social Security or really any retirement can have a dramatic impact on how much money you have in retirement. And today you're going to learn firsthand of an example where somebody literally is able to create a plan with our guest, Susan Kroger, that is going to ultimately result in a potential 200000 up to even 500000 or more for their retirement. So my friends, this is a game changer. Now, anyone who's considering retirement wants to know about Social Security, right? And even if you don't think it's going to be there or it's going to go bankrupt, it's still something you got to consider because the reality of it is it's more likely that Medicare is going to have a problem. I'm not saying ultimately Social Security isn't and it might drop as far as the amount you're going to get, but you got to look at the bigger picture and you got to understand that whenever you're in an election year, you can't really listen to anything that's going on because depending on who's sharing the information, it's skewed to whatever they want it to be. It's either great news or it's terrible news. Many people make seriously costly mistakes by taking their social security at the wrong time, either too early or too late. Typically it's too early, but sometimes it's too late and it can cost them. It can cost them anywhere in the tune of thousands of dollars up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you plan to retire, or you just want to make sure that you're making the best choice when it comes to Social Security, you're going to love today's episode. And I asked our Financial Transition Certified Advisor, Susan Kroger, who is an expert on Social Security, to join us. She's a CFP and a Certified Divorce Financial Advisor, as well as an expert in all areas of financial planning, specifically helping women go through life transition. So please stay tuned. I'm Annette Ba'u, host of the Wealth Inside and Out podcast and founder of The Millionaire Insider. My mission is to help you simplify the money game so you can create a financially secure and fulfilled life without having to have a PhD or spend countless hours on your finances. You're going to learn how to think like a millionaire, stop worrying about money and wondering if your financial house is truly in order and instead spend your time doing what you love. With over three decades advising seven, eight, and even nine-figure millionaires, and now joining that elite group, I'm in a unique position to help you make the best financial choices so you can create a secure financial future and retirement you love. This is the Wealth Inside and Out podcast. To get your free financial checkup, to make sure that you are going to have a secure financial future, you can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash FC. Our free resource for today is our financial freedom formula guide. You can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash FFG to access it. This guide is the first step to help you create a financially secure future so you can worry less about money and enjoy life more. And it provides details of all aspects of your financial plan. So again, themillionaireinsider.com forward slash FFG. MillionaireSeries.com copyrights all materials and intellectual property. This information is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to replace any advisor or specialist or to provide any investment, financial, tax, retirement, planning, or healthcare advice. By accessing this content, you agree to hold MillionaireSeries.com and its affiliates harmless for results achieved or not achieved. For today's show notes, you can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash 70. So let's dive in. So hi and welcome, Susan. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Let's just start off by talking about the big question. When should I take Social Security? (laughs) Million dollar question. Yeah, Yeah, no, I mean, that's a big question for everyone. And everyone always kind of wants to know, like, what am I going to get at this time versus that time? And the question, it's not really like, when should I take Social Security? But when should I be taking Social Security based on my unique situation? Because everybody's different. So it can make a lot of sense to take it for 62 for some people. But let me tell you, it makes a lot more sense to take it later for a lot of people. Just to clarify. So the first time you have the option taken is age 62? Right. Unless you're widowed and then you could take it at 60. Oh, okay. So we're going to just talk mostly just in general right now. So for most people, the earliest age you can take it is age 62. So if you decide you're going to take it at 62, your benefit is reduced by about 30% from what you could get at your full retirement age. You can check on socialsecurity.gov and 
they've got uh, the whole thing based on how what year you were born, what's your full retirement age. But in general, it's about a 30% drop if you take it at 62. If you take it at 65, it's only about a 10% drop. At 67, for most of us, it's going to be 67. That's our full retirement age. And you can also take it as late as 70. Now, if you take it at age 70, that works well, but don't take it any later than that because the amount of money you're going to get out of it is not going to go up and you just be losing money at that point. So 70 is the maximum. And just to clarify, because I just read something and I want to clarify it. So if you wait until 70, between 67 and 70, you're getting like 8%. So it's like 24% more you'll earn on it. Wow, that's huge. That's Yeah, it's about a 24% increase. And I mean, if you don't mind, I can go through an example. This is of someone who at full retirement age, they would get $2,500. So that's age 67. So at age 62, you'll get $1,750 a month, which is about $21,000 a year. At 65, you would get $2,168 or $26,000 a year. Age 67, you're getting the $2,500, which is $30,000 a year. If you waited until 70, you'll get $3,100 a month. So that's a pretty significant difference. Between 62 and 70, that's $16,200 a year difference. If I'm correct on that, if my math is right, that basically is what, 36,000 plus 1,200, so like 37,200. So wow, so you get 7,200 more. You're literally at 21, if you take it at age 65, that's like 16,200. Oh my God, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, 1500 a month, 1400 a month? Yeah. I mean, that, that really is a significant difference. I mean, and think about all the different things that you could pay and everything's just getting more expensive. So the longer you wait, just the more you're going to have as those expenses go up over time. Wow, that is huge. I had a client come in, she's like, I'm starting social security and it was 62. And I'm like, why? You've got a really wealthy husband because I want my own money. I've had several people say that to me. I'm taking it and it's because I want my own money. And it's because they have a husband that controls all the money and the husband's their money. And it's funny. I've also had several people ask me, can I take Social Security without my husband agreeing to it? I think that's so interesting. It's like, yeah, that would be a true statement. What are some of the reasons why people take it at 62 other than just not knowing how much money they're losing? Well, there can be a lot of reasons. If you look at people's longevity in their family, that's a big question. So if people, I know people, they said both of their parents have passed away by age 70, and they think it's a genetic reason why they might pass away that early too, that can be a good reason to take it earlier because you're going to be maximizing your benefit at that point. The other thing is too, is if you're in bad health, there's a couple and both of them have diabetes and they're on dialysis. It doesn't make sense to wait to take social security because you're trying to maximize it for your lifetime. I've got one client and she actually has three aunts who are over a hundred years old and her mom lived to 98. There's a lot of longevity in that family. So that's a pretty good reason for her to wait to take social security until age 70. Yeah. Let's walk through your example of a client who, if he lives to 91, he's going to get over a half a million dollars more. So walk us through that situation. That's just unbelievable. Yeah. So it was really interesting. So I had a client that came in and he had just had his 62nd birthday and his wife took social security right when she turned 62. So she's, of course, saying, you really need to start taking social security now, but he wanted to see what the numbers were. So we ran through it. And it was interesting because if he lived until 85, he would have about $200,000 more of a lifetime benefit. And then by the time he reached age 95, it was going to be over $500,000 extra money that he would have had, which you never know, like one of the two of you is going to live for a long period of time and the surviving spouse gets to take the higher of the two social securities. That can really make a big difference. I was talking with one person and they were saying that it's actually almost like purchasing a life insurance policy for your spouse. And I want to just reiterate what she said. If both spouses are getting Social Security and one dies, the surviving one has the option to take the highest one. But this is something that's really important. You lose the other one. You lose one of them. A lot of people aren't adequately planning for that. And you know what's so funny? As a certified financial planner, I did not even figure that out until about 15 to 20 years into my career. Now, I granted, I wasn't dealing with people who are yet taking Social Security But that is like critical because a lot of people aren't planning for that. They're thinking, oh, great, we've got 5,000 a month between the two of us. Yes, until one partner dies and then you only have 2,500, assuming it's equal. 
And that's another reason why it's in the case with couples, it might make sense for one spouse, usually the lower earning spouse to take it first at 62 is a possibility and have the higher earning spouse take it at age 70. Yeah, if they're close in age. Yeah, because then you're, you know, helping yourself right now, but you're also thinking about what's going to happen in your future. Now, if somebody were to die and they had minor children, then can the minor children can get the money. Is that correct? They can get money. Right. Yeah, there's there's basically what's called a family benefit. So depending upon how many kids you have and the spouse also can get that benefit at that point as well too. The spouse's benefit does stop at a certain point and the kid's benefits stop at 18 or if they're still in high school, I believe they can go until 19 and get that benefit. Okay, so I want to clarify something and I think you've got some backup to be able to provide it. It used to be that when you took Social Security early, like at 62, you could get Medicare. But it's my understanding, and I've got a couple clients that that did that, but it's my understanding now that's changed. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, no, I did a little bit of double checking on that because that's one of the big problems that clients are running into now is if they start taking Social Security at age 62, they have got to cover their medical until age 65. And as we all know, that can be pretty expensive these days. So that's another reason to look and see whether or not you should be taking Social Security at 62. We're pretty sure that they changed the laws somewhere along the way. Now, if you're on Social Security disability or like you have kidney renal failure, there's a bunch of different things where you can get on Medicare at that point if you have a specific medical need for it. Do you have like a rule of thumb of, you talked a little bit about it, but is there like some rule of thumb as far as the ages of longevity of when a person should take Social Security? Yeah. If you talk to most financial planners and most social security calculators, for that matter, they're all going to tell you, wait until you're 70 to take that. But I mean, I've been doing this for over 20 years and there is no one size fits all as far as social security. You really need to look and see what are your other potential like guaranteed sources of income. If you have a pension, if you have assets that you can use over that time frame, there's a lot of variables for people that we really need to look at. And that's I think why Social Security really needs to be a part of your overall financial plan, not just something that you do on a one-off and not because you do it because so-and-so said that it's going to go broke in five years, so you better get your money now. That's not a good reason to do it. So make sure that your Social Security decision is part of your financial plan. Yeah, I think that's such a great point. And I want to give you a resource. So if you have questions that you want answered from Susan, please go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash support hyphen request. Because her point is, is that when people make just one-off decisions, rarely is it the best decision. And I know one of my friend's friends, we we're having just a brief conversation and they're like, oh, they're going to take Social Security as soon as they can. And I'm like, based on what? Well, he wants his money. He wants to get money as soon as he can. And I thought, okay, well, that's a good reason. So yeah, don't let that be a reason made by that dopamine hit or that rush thinking I'm going to get more money. When you think about, would you like to lose $500,000? Most people would say no. You got to be aware of that. Let's talk about some of the variables. I mean, we've talked about some of them, but do you have any more that you want to add? Health and longevity are probably two of the main reasons. But there's also, is like, do you really enjoy what you're doing? Do you want to keep working for a period of time? Because if you start taking Social Security before full retirement age and you're still working, they're going to take part of that benefit away every year. I want to say that the amount right now is up to like $21,000 that you can earn before they start basically penalizing you and starting to take one or every $2 away. But that's just something to take into consideration. And, you know, if you change your mind on that later on and decide you don't want to work, then you can look at your social security situation again and see whether or not you want to change the age that you're planning on taking it at. So I think that that's a big one. If you have guaranteed income, such as a pension or an annuity, that may be another reason to delay taking Social Security, especially if you're doing well on your month to month income that you're getting from those sources. Then Social Security can maybe add an extra benefit later on because we all know that a lot of those pensions and annuities don't necessarily keep up with changes in inflation. So your Social Security then can be a buffer for inflation in the future. But once again, I think it's just really looking at your situation, what makes the most sense okay. for you and making that part of your plan. Let's just say somebody plans on waiting. They say, okay, I get that. I've got longevity in my family. I'm going to wait. 
what are some of the options that they can do to generate that income other than just taking it all out of investments before they are eligible to receive their full benefit or waiting till age 70 to get even more? Well, if you've got annuities, you can start taking out of those and those will be usually guaranteed lifetime income for you. So that's a good option. A lot of other people, they go to work part-time. They're like saying, okay, I, this makes sense for me to wait to take social security, but I'd like to have a little more disposable income at this point. And so doing a part-time job can often make up that gap for you for whatever you need at that point. And I think we also mentioned this before too, but looking at does it make sense for one spouse to take that social security now to cover an income gap and then to wait to take the other spouse's social security at a later date? Yeah, that's great. I want to talk for a little bit about part-time jobs because I think one of the things that I have seen is that you're successful at your job, you enjoy it, you're contributing, and then all of a sudden you're not. And I think for a lot of people that causes serious psychological issues. It's just interesting how I think everyone thinks what it's going to be like. It's kind of like Christmas. It's the anticipation of Christmas that's the exciting part. The actual, when it gets there, you're like, oh, okay, it was a little more fun. No, the anticipation or you're going on a trip or whatever it may be. And I think that might be the way, same way it is with retirement. And I don't know if you want to add anything to that. It's interesting because I've had a lot of clients that have retired in the last two years. And there's a lot of angst about starting your retirement, all of a sudden going from earning money to earning absolutely nothing and relying on your investments or social security. So sometimes they like the idea of part-time work because they're still earning some money as they're kind of making that transition. Yeah, I love that. And I also like the fact that the studies you look at, like if you even work one more year, it has such a dramatic impact on your retirement. It's so much the point of where even though, I mean, I love what I do, I'm not planning on retiring in the near future. I sort of laugh because I'm like, it really makes the point. If you start taking your money now, and let's say even if you have a significant amount of money, it still has a dramatic impact. Whereas if you wait for say another five or 10 years and you let that money grow, you're not taking it out, you're adding to it. It really gives you a lot more options. And I, I just think, especially for us women who are a little bit typically more conservative and more concerned and want the guarantees and want the certainty. I think it's huge. Yeah. Well, no, and you're right. Cause I mean, I did a plan for someone recently and just even them working two more years, it was a $400,000 swing in what they had available to them in retirement, because you figure you're working two more years, you're putting money into your retirement accounts. You're not taking money out of your retirement accounts for expenses. And so it's amazing how much of a difference just working a couple of years makes. And, you know, and a couple can look at that and say, okay, what's more important to us? Not stressing out about this in retirement, or let's just work a couple more years so that we feel like we've got a buffer. Oh, yeah. And I want to talk just for one minute. So my favorite thing in life, I love guaranteed income more than anyone. <laughs> like It is so interesting. I shouldn't say that because my clients do too. A lot of them do. But I want to talk for one minute about just the power of guaranteed income. So we're talking about Social Security and a lot of people love that because once they start getting Social Security, they're like, they just have that guaranteed amount of money. And I know some people think, oh my gosh, they're worried that they might not be there, which I think that that could be a problem way down the road. I'm not concerned about the foreseeable future. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I think that they're going to do something to shore it up because otherwise they're not going to get reelected, so... Well, and I also think there's so many people relying on it that, I mean, it would be an absolute catastrophe if people didn't get it. I think that's true. But I think one of the things a lot of people and a lot of people, you know, listening, you may or one of your children or somebody, you know, is still like at that stage where they're still accumulating money. Maybe they've had that paycheck and they want to replace that. So they're like, okay, I'm used to getting X amount of dollars per month. I want to get that. And I don't want it to just be from social security. So it's like, it's kind of like guaranteed income, which is typically from an annuity that is issued by an insurance company. And the only thing I want to make one comment on before I get your feedback is I was reading an article about a money management company that's like, oh, they hate annuities and this, that. And so I actually downloaded the report. And what I found so interesting about the report is that they gave accurate information, but they switch between a variable annuity and a fixed annuity and a guaranteed annuity. And so what I thought was so interesting about the article is that they're talking about how high the internal costs are of a variable annuity. And because of that, 
how bad it is and that. But then they switched to talking about a fixed annuity, but they didn't go into the fact that you don't have that same issue as far as really high fees. And so I just thought it was one of the things that you've got to look at your situation. You've got to look at what works for you, but you cannot just read something. I mean, this is a really reputable firm, but their whole thing is they don't want you having an annuity. They want you investing in the market. And my thought process is, I mean, we have millions of dollars in the market. I'm completely pro stock market, but I also understand that I've seen that money go up 40% one year, go down 20%, go up 60%, go down 30%. I mean, it's like a roller coaster some years. And for me, my personality, I do not like seeing it when it goes down. And it's it's not going to really make a dramatic impact on our lives because we have a lot, we're diversified, we got a lot of money. But I look at that, I'm like, oh my gosh, what if we're going into not just a recession, but a depression? What's funny is that all these people that are saying, oh, you're better off being in the stock market. Well, you should be better off because you're taking on so much more risk. And they're not coming in saying, if you lose money, we're going to guarantee you can't lose any money. And so I don't know if you want to add to that, but to me, I'm like, what are people missing? I just look at that and I'm like, I love knowing how much money I'm going to have every month and that I can't lose any, and I wouldn't put all my money in it at all. But I just love that concept. So I want to hear your perspective. Well, and I think one of the questions I like to ask clients is, if you could choose, what percentage of your income would you want guaranteed during retirement to cover XYZ expenses? How much would you want in guaranteed income? They're like, well, okay, and they give me a number. And it's like, in a lot of cases, we can do that or something similar to that without using all of your assets. Yeah. Good, because you need your liquidity during retirement too. Yes, but yes. If, especially if you're a conservative person, you're going to get more out of a guaranteed income annuity than you are by keeping your money in the savings all the time. So you're just trying to, once again, find that balance and that guaranteed income can be a part of your financial plan. Well, and I think to add to that is longevity risk. My biggest concern of clients and even anyone listening is that you're gonna run out of money, meaning even if you have money. And it's like the number one concern I've had from the over 200 plus women I've interviewed is running out of money. And some of them, it's a real legitimate concern. And I look at that and I'm like, if you had guaranteed income and you know every month you had X amount of dollars, that wouldn't be the number one concern you have. And I think a lot of people don't realize, I was looking at some of the statistics and I saw two different reports. If you live to 65, the odds are for a woman, she's going to live to 88. If she lives to like 71, it's like 91. It was just fascinating because of everything that's happening with longevity and all the medical breakthroughs. And the good news is we're living longer. And the bad news is the cost of living longer. So I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with that. And that is a big concern of clients across the board. So the people that have more guaranteed income they don't worry about as much about what's going in the stock market. The yeah. people who have everything in the stock market are constantly watching that and worrying. Yeah. Well, it is. It's like a roller coaster. And it's and it's one of the things where I do this for a living. And even though we're invested in more single stocks, which is more risk, and I don't recommend that for people, I think you got to look at your situation and figure out what works for you. And for a lot of people that would not work. But I mean, you've got to be able to handle swings of, Stock's at 135. Next thing you know, it's at 225. Then it's down. You know, it's just all, it's like, wow, it's big. And people should not be doing that unless they're working with somebody qualified. They're qualified. They've got a significant amount of money. There's a lot of things. So I'm not here giving investment advice, but I do think that said, you're taking a lot more risk because you can lose money and many people do. And because of that, you've got to have a higher return. And that's why when you're like, well, you're not getting as much return. Well, you can't get as much return if you have somebody else taking the risk. It just doesn't work that way. For me, it's priceless. And for my clients, it's been priceless. I've had people who literally could not sleep at night. They were so worried. And once they started getting that guaranteed money, it was like they just no longer were worried about money. It's just fascinating how much yeah. that impacts people. Can we just talk briefly just about a couple other scenarios? If you are married and your spouse dies. Now, if your spouse is already taking social security and the person is under 60, do they still have to wait until 60 to take it or can they take it sooner? No, they have to wait until 60 to take it. Okay. All right. 
then if they have children, then there is a family benefit where if the person dies, then the kids can get, the family can get a benefit. Right, right. And you know, and when you're saying that too, in that case, the spouse can also get it if they're taking care of kids. So if there's kids involved, they could get it earlier, but then it stops at a certain age for them. And then they start it again later on. At 60. Okay. And then they'll have to analyze if theirs is greater than, right. if theirs is greater than their spouse's. Okay. And then the next issue is a person who's divorced. Mm -hmm. So can you just clarify those rules? Yeah. So the rules for divorce changed a few years ago, but basically you have to be divorced for two years before you can start taking social security income of your spouse. So you could start taking your social security income and then switch over to their benefit later on, but you only get half of what the spouse's benefit is. So you really need to look and see what your social security benefit would be versus your spouse's. If you've never worked before, then you're obviously going to want to take 50% of the spouse's social security benefit. One thing to keep in mind too, though, is that when that spouse passes, even if they have remarried, if you were married to them for at least 10 years, you can get their death benefit as well. Okay. And then if they're married longer than 10 years and their ex-spouse, now do they still only get half or then at that point would they get the full? They would get the full benefit. And even if the spouse that died had been married to three or four women for yeah. 10 years each, they all get the yeah. full. It doesn't impact. Yeah, that's impact that anything. is absolutely huge. Yeah. And I think the bottom line in all this, my friends, we are giving you a lot of information. This is not intended to replace the advice. It's educational purposes only. If you have specific questions about your situation, you can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash support hyphen request. You can talk directly with Susan. Just make a note that you would have questions about social security and that you want to ask those. But this is something that I think one of the biggest points she made is that this is one element of your bigger plan. And when people look at their bigger plan and then make a decision, it's always better than if you're just looking at one thing or you're just like, well, why are you taking it? Oh, because I want money now. It's like, okay, well, I would fund you for those next three years and I'll take the extra 500000 It just doesn't make sense unless you don't have money, right? And so I think those things are all considerations. So do you have anything else you want to leave the listeners with? No, other than this is going to be a big part of your retirement income. So plan ahead. Ideally, your social security income should be your fund money in retirement. If you've made good plans and you've saved your money going long, then you can really maximize what your benefit is in the long term. Yeah, what great advice. Thank you so much, Susan. Wealth of information. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for inviting me. That concludes our call for today, guys. So I really encourage you to go back listen, re-listen, and take notes. And then if you have questions, themillionaireinsider.com forward slash support hyphen request. I'll look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Bye for now. If you love the content of this podcast, please follow and subscribe to our channel so you get notified of episodes and also give us a five-star review and share a comment. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on taking another step to create a financially free life you love. If you're not sure about your financial future or that it's in order, or you are ready to stop worrying about money or possibly the fear of becoming a bag lady, ending up broke in retirement, or you simply are ready to know your financial house is in order so that you can have a bright financial future, please go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash NSF. And that doesn't stand for non-sufficient funds. It stands for next step finance. It's the next best step of what you need to do so you can avoid an NSF notice in your future. Again, themillionaireinsider.com forward slash NSF. The number of women who were not broke or poor while working or married is staggering. The entire mission of the Wealth Inside and Out podcast is to ensure you have the information for you, your family, your friends, anyone who's willing to listen to it and apply it so that you can create a financially free life you love. Again, themillionaireinsider.com forward slash NSF. Until our next episode, take one action that will help you create a financially free life you love. I'm Annette Ba'u, your host. All international copyrights are reserved. Bye for now.